TX Stampin' Sharon. I decided it was time to play with some vellum. We're gonna do some different things. I hope that you're inspired. I hope that you're able to pull out that vellum cardstock that maybe you haven't played with in, like, in a long time. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I invite you to subscribe below and then hit that notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload a video or I go live on YouTube. If you currently do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd be honored to help you with your Stampin' Up! supply needs. You can find out how to contact me, how to sign up for my newsletter, all that good stuff below the video. Just click the read more button. Let's play with some vellum. It's been a while since I have played with vellum cardstock, so I wanted to do that today. And I chose to use floating and fluttering because I wanted to play with the butterflies. It has the coordinating dies, and the fun thing is, you can stamp two of these and there are two sets of dies. So you can cut them out at the same time. Great. Um, I wanna share with you some things to do with vellum and things not to do with vellum. And I hope that it helps you. If you do not have any Stampin' Up! vellum cardstock, I do invite you to uh, visit my store and get some. The tips and tricks that I'm gonna teach you I don't know how it works on what I call Brand X vellum. I just know what it does with our vellum. It is a thicker cardstock. There used to be a thin vellum, but this one is thick and it is called cardstock. I'm going to use Memento ink. Now you could use stays on and, and skip the step that I'm going to be adding. Um, if you choose to use the stays on, you need to make sure that you have re-inked it, but that it's not too juicy. I'm gonna share with you some things, um, uh, some samples of what it looks like if your ink is too juicy, and that just means too much ink refill on there. I like to ink up my stamp upside down because um, it is a good size stamp. It's not huge, but I just like to do it this way. And then I'm gonna stamp straight down and I'm really gonna press and I'm gonna hold that for just a few seconds. I want all that black ink to get evenly um, onto my cardstock. And you will find that you have to peel it off. The stays on, you may have to really peel it off. And if your ink pad is too dry, whether it's the Memento or the stays on, then you may um, you may see it kind of spotty or uh, that it didn't ink all the way onto the cardstock. Um, but again, just make sure that you have recently inked up your stamp pad. Now, this is wet, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do three of these for the three different ways I'm going to share with you um, how to use the vellum. And one of them I think looks like a stained glass. So again, just holding it. Now, the next step I'm doing is I chose to add some clear embossing powder. If you don't want to do that, you could just use your heat gun and let and dry it. Um, however, it does take a while to dry. Next, I wanna talk about the Stampin' Up! heat gun. Um, the heat gun, and I'm not going to keep it on the entire time because I am going to emboss all of this um, powder, but the um, heat gun actually has two settings, low, high. The lower setting is perfect for vellum. Um, that way, you, uh, it doesn't curl the cardstock as much. Um, you will find some curling, but you can, I'll show you how to get rid of that. Um, but if you put it on the higher setting, you have a greater chance of burning the cardstock and of um, having a lot more curl. Make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now, over the years, it has been said you could emboss two different ways. I can go from underneath or I can go from the top. You just don't want your powder to blow off 
So you never wanna hold it really close. I hold it about an inch and I constantly move my heat gun to melt all of the powder, okay? So right there at the end, I put it underneath so that you could see the powder being melted. Now I use clear emboss powder. If you have black, you could use that as well. I didn't want too stark of a black. I just wanted more of a subtle black. Is there such a thing? Not gray, just subtle. All right, so we're gonna let that cool, but as you can see, my paper is a little curled. The cardstock is extremely strong and I can actually just use my fingers to kind of bend it back down. If it's still too curly for you, you could put um, some weight on it, our big clear blocks, um, just whatever you have, some books, whatever um, that is handy um, to have that a chance, give that a chance to lay down. Okay, for the first technique, I am actually going to flip my cardstock over and this is a technique called dry embossing. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the stylus end of my take your pick tool. And I'm simply going to just rub in little circles like I'm coloring. You don't have to stay in the lines, so this is perfect. You do have to stay in the outline, but within the lines of the butterfly, you can just kind of wiggle all around and just color. So this is dry embossing vellum. And you know, when I used to do in-person classes, I came across a book that I used to use, and I'm gonna share that with you. Um, as you learn new tips and tricks, um, sometimes it's great to have a little book of some sort that you can refer to. Okay, oh, and it's really hard to see. Can you see the, the whiteness of it? So it turns it more from a translucent to more of an opaque white. And let me show you my card that I made. I cut off the leaves because I didn't have room for them, but you could certainly do that. Um, and I added this to my cardstock With dimensionals. I put dimensionals under each of the sets of wings and so it kind of gives it a puffy look and it looks like they're flying off the paper. So different, right? Okay, let's keep on playing. If uh, One more thing, if you find that um, you didn't get as much of whiteness like some of my spots or not, you can flip it over and use the smaller end and it will help fill in and give it more opaque.
You just want to be careful not to tear your cardstock. So while I'm adding good pressure, I'm not, can you see any difference? So I can tell a big difference. I know it's hard on the camera, um, but you want to add pressure, but you don't want to like really push too hard or you may poke it through. Although it's pretty, see, there you go. I poked it through. Okay. All right. Let's move on to another trick. For my coloring, you can use Stampin' Blends or water-based. Not everybody has both, um, but I have the same colors in both. And so I wanna show you, I'm gonna use the Stampin' Blends because I, um, the water-based markers do take longer to dry. And for the sake of the video, um, I'm not going to put you through more embossing, but you could heat set um, the back of them, but you just wanna make sure if you're using water-based that they are good and dry before you go to add them to your card. On my blog post, I'm showing you some close-up pictures of some of these. So I hope that that helps you. If you, if you can't quite see on the video, I, I think my pictures do um, a really good job. I tried really hard to, to give you some good shots. Next, I think I need to learn how to take um, pictures, like take a photography course. <laughs> okay, so I'm just coloring in everything. You could certainly change the colors of your butterflies. You can add, and I think I did that on some of my samples where you um, change it up a bit. But again, I just wanna show you what this looks like. Very soft and subtle, right? Okay, now we're gonna flip it back over and we're going to do the same thing, but we're gonna do it on the front, okay? And I'm actually gonna use my barrel tip Oh, I wanted to show you though. I have a sample though that I need you to see. So take that back. We're gonna flip over to the water-based and I'm going to color in. Now remember, this is gonna stay wet for a long time. And the reason is, is that the vellum is not porous, okay? The uh, ink cannot soak into it, but I have a really cool thing to share with you. This is the one that's going to look like stained glass when we're done. Okay, remember our embossing powder? We're going to heat set that as well. Isn't that so fun to you can heat you can heat any embossing uh, project from the back now you can see that this looks more subtle where i colored on the back versus coloring on the front and i tell you doesn't that look like stained glass i sure hope you can see it on the video because it's so pretty 
All right, let me show you my cards I made using those two techniques. Okay, now I want to point out that because I was adding it to a colored um, designer series paper, I went ahead and cut out butterflies again using basic white and I added them together. But here is my shiny one that looks like stained glass. And then here's my more subtle one where I colored on the back. I wanted to um, use this paper because celebration is coming to an end and a lot of people have been joining my team because they get 200 sheets of this designer series paper for free when they become a demonstrator. Now, when you become a demonstrator, you do not have to do videos like I do. You don't have to do blog posts. You don't have to sell. You don't have to do anything other than simply enjoy the 20% discount whenever you purchase from yourself. If I can answer any questions for you, either about vellum or about becoming a demonstrator, please contact me below or make a comment below. There are two other, three other things I wanna share with you. Remember how I said that the black ink takes forever to dry? I wanted to leave this version here because I wanted to remind you that it will smear and your project will be ruined, okay? Now, these two projects, my ink pad was too juicy. See, I lost the, um, the definition. My leaves filled in with black ink. This one, I wanted to play with using Versamark and white embossing. While it's pretty, it really gave me fat butterfly wings. Can you see the difference? I mean, it's okay, but I really lost a lot of definition. So when your ink pads are too juicy for the design, either switch types of ink pads or switch your design. Okay, remember the book that I told you? This was the technique book that we created um, in one of my classes when I did in-person classes. Um, and it was just kind of fun. Um, we, we would do a lesson, and so here's the dry embossed vellum. And so I had the instructions, I had the title, and then I had a sample so that they wouldn't forget what dry embossed vellum was. This little book you can find in the annual catalog on page 154. It is the small little uh, six by eight album. And this is part of the Memories and More collection where you could do some scrapbooking. Um, I call it scrapbooking on the go. <laughs> um, it has these great cards that give you color, um, little stickers, things like that, that you could use to make a photo album. So that's my little technique book and there's more techniques in here. So um, I'll be sharing more of these with you, but for now, I just wanted to introduce this to you. Okay guys, that's it for today. Happy stamping, y'all.